YouTube subscribers and uh, new uh, viewers. I wanted to give you a brief update uh, because of all the questions that I've been asked about the B117 mutation in the UK regarding the SARS-CoV-2 virus. So understand that recently we had this strain that's been called the B117 or the SARS-CoV-2 virus of concern or variant of concern for December 2020 that has come out with about 60%, if you'll see now, of the strains and the variants in the UK. We see that in these three articles from the CDC, from the uh, Genetic Consortium for SARS-CoV-2 in Britain and the European CDC, that this virus uh, variant was rare, but now it's become the most common variant around the London area of Southeast England. Now, we see these mutations about every two weeks in this virus, and this is the rule rather than the exception with viral infections. We've seen a simultaneous, uh, almost identical mutation appear in South Africa, uh, just like the one in Southeast uh, England. And we've seen recently variants in other places, and, and folks understand most variants and mutations make uh, organisms less effective and less able to reproduce, not more. Uh, but we've seen one emerge and then disappear in Singapore that had a different mutation. Uh, the, the important thing to remember is that this has not, for us, shown up in the United States yet, but we only test and sequence about 3% of the viral infections. And I'll get to that in a minute about what we're going to do about these new variants that come out. Uh, just so you know, uh, we, this is a, a mutation of the mRNA molecule that this virus carries that produces a single amino acid substitution at one location that does code for the spike protein. And this has caused many to worry that this is going to cause uh, problems that, uh, that I'll detail in just a minute regarding vaccinations and infections and treatments. Um, this mutant does, and the variant of the protein that it produces in these viruses, does bind a little bit easier to the ACE2 receptor that the spike protein uses to gain access to our system and our cells. And the one thing that it does do that is important is it allows a little more easy spread between humans. What it does not do is cause more or less severe COVID disease cause this virus to evade lab detection of any kind, uh, decrease susceptibility of this virus to our treatments that are effective, and most especially, this does not allow this mutant variant virus of SARS-CoV-2 to be able to evade immune protection once a person is vaccinated with our uh, mRNA vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna. So what are we gonna do about this? Well, we have now what's called the NS3, which is the National SARS-CoV-2 Strain Surveillance Program. And by January, we're gonna see that each state sends twice a week 10 samples of COVID-infected or COVID-suffering patients so that these SARS-CoV-2 viruses can be sequenced by the CDC and then 160 other laboratories. They're going to intentionally take any new animal infection or any interesting infection in a case that may be atypical, but most importantly, they're going to sample of the one in 20 people who are vaccinated who go on to get infections because this is a 95% effective uh, vaccine. They're gonna take those strains and sequence more of those to make sure that these are not caused by genetic mutations that cause variant viruses to produce a different spike protein or other proteins that might be important. Also, to, to close, this is not something to worry about or get panicked about. Uh, I did have one other symptom besides arm soreness from the vaccine, and that is I did get a fever blister, but I had had a really, really hard run and really cold driving wind the night before, so maybe it wasn't the vaccine. Maybe it was uh, working out too hard at 55. So I'll look forward to seeing you in a few days. I'm going to have another update. Thanks for your attention, and this information, of course, is really meant to bless and to serve you, and I hope it does. Merry Christmas, and uh, Happy New Year. Thanks.